Hello everyone. Welcome to the second module of the course Web Information Systems that is offered as a part of the Begin Smart Data Science Certificate. In this module, I will talk about HTML and CSS. So let us briefly look at the agenda for today. We will talk about what HTML is, take a quick look at what the web server and web browser does, and then we'll move into HTML discussing the page structure, as well as some of the common visible HTML elements. Then we will move on to cascading style sheets or CSS, talk about the basics for that. And then finally, we look at oh, what are the new updates that have taken place in the HTML and CSS, specifically with the latest ones, that is the overview of HTML5 and CSS3. So let us begin. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So it's basically a markup for the text. So before we move into that, though, we need to talk about what a web server and a web browser is. So what is a web server, first of all? It is a program on a server computer somewhere out on the internet that delivers web pages to web browsers. On the other hand, a web browser is a software application that enables a user to display and interact with components like text, images, typically located on the web page, either on the World Wide Web or in the local area network. With this information now, let us move forward to what HTML is and what it does. As mentioned earlier, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And so we know that computers communicate with the internet using a computer language called HTML. This can be as, as used as a simple text file which contains these markups, which are also referred to as tags or elements. And it's the process of linking objects together so that when one object is clicked, the linked object can be viewed. So we will look at this in some of the examples which we will discuss during class so that the difference is clearer and what all we can do with using simple HTML. It was initially created by Tim Berners-Lee in 1990. It contains a series of markup tags to categorize the different elements in a web page. The web browser then interprets these different tags to create what we see as a website. So it needs to translate these tags and then convert it into a website. An example of a very simple HTML uh, document is shown here. We can see that all of these uh, tags are described in these angular brackets. For example, if you look at the HTML tag, there is it, it implies that this particular file is an HTML file. So it identif helps you identify the file type. And you also see that corresponding to, corresponding to the HTML tag, there is another one where you have to close the bracket. So everything inside it falls into that category. For example, for the body tag, similarly, there is a backslash body tag. So anything within that is part of the body element or the HTML file. Again, I'd like to reiterate that HTML, it's not a programming language. It just is a series of tags which provides information about a page. So um, using this, you can do a lot of things. You can refer to other web pages. That's what we talked about linking other objects. We can add images or video files. Uh, we look at some examples during class. And you can do a lot of things just using simple HTML. So some of the popular HTML tags are described here. Like you have the headers, H1, H, you can tag them with, you can label them as H1, H2. Again, all in angular brackets, that's how it identifies the tags. You can also make them strong bolder by putting say strong. You can also divide it into paragraphs, break your lines, 
have links. So you use the tag A. Then you can also use it for tables, parts of bodies, and the list just goes on. So along with that, you can tags can also have some val attributes or values associated with them. For example, for a particular font, you can have color, you can have size. For example, for paragraphs, you could have some attributes like the alignment. It could be center, it could be left. So the way you define that is you have the attribute name equals and into double quotes, you put in the value. So like, for example, color equals red and red would be in double quotes. Again, we will look at examples in class. So these really are the basics, the fundamental entities for HTML. Uh, the best way to really understand these is to go over, uh, is to practice this. So we will look over examples in, in class and there will be assignments which will further help us uh, strengthen our concepts. So this is the first part of HTML. In the next video, I will be talking about CSS and the newer versions of HTML5 and CSS3. Now let us move on to the second segment of this module, CSS, which is used for styling the HTML content. But first of all, let's talk about styling. What happens if we style purely using the HTML? These have, this has an issue. Why? So for example, let's consider that we have specified a tag uh, H1 and we want to style it. Would the attributes, the styling attributes be interpreted differently across the multiple browsers? Yes, there could be compatibility issues as we move, uh, which depend heavily on the individual browsers rendering the capabilities. Also, what if I wanted to redefine the styling for this particular tag H1? It could be uh, if you wanted to say change the style for a very specific tag, you would have to manually change the parameters for each of the instances. So hence, we decide to use, we can use the CSS or the cascading style sheets to define the style separately from the content. Again, uh, let's talk about what are the various ways that we can attach these styles to the HTML document. One way is to directly use the inline style attribute for each of the individually for each of the tags. We do so by using the style tags as shown here. It's good only for very specific tags. And the main issue here is it's not reusable. You cannot use the same styling for all the other ones. You'd have to individually specify it for each of the tags. The other way to do that is you can have an internal style sheet. We will look at an example shortly. This is slightly better than using the inline styling, but it still has limited reusability. A better way to do this would be using external style sheets and linking your HTML document, pointing it to this external CSS document. This is reusable and it's definitely recommended for larger websites where you have a lot of styles specified for each of the different attributes, different tags, elements in the HTML. So let's look at an example here. This is for the uh, specifically for the internal styling uh, example, so the second one. In this particular case, you see that the H1 styling attributes have been described. You already noticed the difference. Now we are looking at curly braces instead of the angular brackets we were looking at for tags. So this tells you that this is a styling uh, element here. And within the H1 styling uh, parameters, we are specifically looking at the font and the color. In the font, we see that there are two uh, entities provided. One is Georgia, one is Sans Serif. What this tells you is that first the browser will try to use Georgia as specified. If for some reason that is not provided or accessible, then it takes the second option, sans serif. Similarly for the color, it's using the color is specified as purple. So again, we see it's different from the attribute 
specification we looked at HTML, where we said color equals, it would have been color equals into double quotes purple, right? Why are we talking? Why do we say that this is a cascading style sheet? One way, uh, so this particular example will highlight that for us. So let's look inside this style. Again, this is an internal styling exa sheet example. So within the body, the color blue is specified, whereas for the paragraph, the font family is specified. So the question is, what would happen for the, what color would the para paragraph, uh, the paragraph uh, uh, text contain? Because the body is surrounds all the elements of the HTML document, the, uh, the parameters for body cascade down to the other, style, the other elements, such as paragraphs. So for this particular example, we will see that even the paragraph is colored blue because the effect of the body parameters gets cascaded down. Now, if in paragraph I had specified the color as, say, black, then that would override the body parameter, and then the paragraph would have the color black. So there are various ways of defining styles for the internal as well as the external style sheets. And uh, there's a link provided here, as you can see. So a lot of the material which I cover is taken from W3 schools, and we will also look at examples from there. It's really very concise, and I encourage you to try many examples, and it will help you understand the concepts better. So one way is uh, you globally specify, do it for all the specified tags. So we looked at an example in the earlier slide. The other way is using the ID attribute on a tag. So for example, there is an example provided here for HTML as well as CSS. So for the a header H2, the ID new splash is provided. And then with the CSS, you could then specify the, uh, the, the attributes for that, the color, the font, the weight, then you can make it bold. So how does the priority work? Because you could have different attributes specified at each of these chains, right? So the order of this style sheet is provided. The basic one is the browser default. That's the default. Then the next is the external style sheet. Then the internal style sheet, which is provided in the head section. Again, the example we looked at. And then the inline style. So this is in the order of increasing priority. Again, we will look at some examples in class. So the assumption is that you have looked at the video already. And then we look at some of these newer changes that have happened with the specifications that have been updated for both HTML as well as CSS. So currently, the HTML standard is 4. It was 4.01 in 1999. But then it got updated to HTML5, which tells you that it's like the fifth revision of the HTML standards. So already it is supported by most of the modern browsers. And it has lesser need for external plugins, better error handling. It has device independence. And many features have been added that are useful specifically for low power devices like cell phones. So there are more semantic elements that have been added, like article, footer, header. And there are more APIs, like HTML, geolocation, drag and drop. Then there are server-side events. So again, we look at some examples. Also, there has been much more focus on the multimedia and web applications. For example, audio and video tags and Canvas for drawing. Similarly, with the CSS standards, these have be, are being, the CSS3 is being developed alongside with the HTML5. There have been many changes in that as well. Some of these have been pointed out. So there are some, for example, a lot of the UI level changes have been uh, added to make the user interface look more uh, professional, more sophisticated. Then you can also do a lot of uh, um, uh, transformations both 2D and 3D. You can rotate elements, you can translate them, you can skew them for more effects. Then uh, one thing though you have to 
uh, consider with the CSS3 specifications especially is that although much of it is already supported by the browsers, many of them are still browser specific. For example, if you look at say the resizing property, it's not supported by Internet Explorer, although it is supported by the Chrome 4.0 onwards, Mozilla 5.0 onwards, and Safari 4.0 onwards. So you have to, again, look at the browser specified rules when you choose the uh, some of these effects of the newer versions. Then at the end of the slides, I have some more information which you could, these are more like pointers which could be helpful when you do some of the assignments we will be doing, both in class as well as for uh, evaluating how much you understand. So please have a look at that. And this really ends my uh, uh, discussion for this first module.